This is the new Porsche 911 Hybrid. The Porsche second generation 992 Carrera GTS is powered by a 3.6 litre hybrid flat six with a hybrid powertrain for the first time. From air cooled to water cooled to now turbo electric hybrid power, this is a major revolution in the Porsche 911 lineage. The new Porsche 911 has been subtly introduced under the facelifted 992, but everything is new from head to toe under this fancy skin. The new 3.6 litre flat six engine in the Porsche GTS generates a total of 541 brake horsepower and a sub three second to zero to 60 miles an hour. In reality, this seems to be a conservative number and I would not be surprised if this is two and a half seconds as seen in the Porsche 992 Turbo S. This GTS reaches a top speed of 194 miles an hour. So back in 2010, the real first Porsche 911 to feature the hybrid engine was this, the 911 GT3R Hybrid. This is not your usual SUV hybrid, if that's what you was thinking. The technology here is quite advanced. It doesn't have any plug-in battery. So how does this new turbo hybrid, what Porsche is calling the T-Hybrid, actually work? The new Porsche features two electric batteries, one in the eight-speed PDK gearbox and one integrated electric motor placed between the engine and the turbo, which provides its flat six motor with an electrified boost. The electric motor is designed instantaneously, which brings the turbocharger up to speed. The immediate buildup of boost pressure comes from here and then the electric motor in the exhaust gas turbocharger generates electric power which is then extracted from the exhaust gas flow. This means that there is now only the need for one turbo not a bi-turbo. The electric turbocharger which now ensures a more dynamic and responsive power delivery and removes turbo lag as it helps spool up the turbo. This motor also acts in reverse as a generator to recharge the battery. Although this adds 50 kilograms more to the weight of the car, it provides more power and better fuel economy and deals with meeting forthcoming European emissions regulations. The hybrid drive is used in this case not only for extra power, but also to save fuel. There is no major design change to the 992. I quite like this particular design of this era of Porsche generation. The silhouette remains the same and there's a bit of nip and tuck in the revisions. The front end has been tidied up a little bit with the new matrix LED headlights, which now include all of the lighting functions. The old car's bumper mounted driving lights have gone, which have been replaced by these louver styled large cooling vents, which are active and can be opened and closed depending on the engine's cooling needs. Overall, it gives the car a cleaner look. Towards the end, I like the running light strip with the Porsche logo, which gives the rear end of the 911 appear deeper and wider. A redesigned rear grille with five fins per side connects to the rear window to form a graphic unit that fades into the retractable spoiler below. The number plate is positioned a bit higher with a clearly structured rear bumper. Model specific exhaust systems are also elegantly integrated into the striking diffuser. The 911 Carrera will continue to have a 3-litre twin-turbo boxer engine without this hybrid system. However, it has the same one that's fitted as the old Porsche 902 first generation GTS with a power boost to 395 brake horsepower and 0 to 60 or 100 kilometers uh, will be 4.1 seconds or 3.9 seconds with the Porsche support chrono package. The new Porsche 911 receives a new chassis and suspension with its new hybrid electric architecture. It features a fancy dynamic chassis control, which means it can have even more flexibility and precision. There's quite a few changes to the interior of the car. They are kind of sw slight changes, but they are changes nevertheless, and they kind of move away from the tradition there are a few weight saving changes. For the first time, the 911 Coupe is now just a two seater as standard with child seats now at a no cost option. The seats might reduce weight, but it was always useful to have them. There are quite a few changes which I will miss. It now features a starter button, the 911's first, which replaces the twister function of the previous model. For the first time, the 911 has a fully digital instrument cluster. The traditional speedometer displays a gone 
it's all now quite electronic and all very flat, all very digital, all screens, touch screens. So as a 911 purist, I would love to see the previous analog dials featured. For future 911s, this technology sets out quite a revolution and I'm looking forward to the new Porsche Turbo S hybrid, assuming that uses the GTS 650 brake horsepower engine plus the additions that you get with the 50 or so T hybrid system it could be that we see more than around 700 brake horsepower just for the 911 turbo but I was thinking imagine if you have a twin turbo with two electric units thank you very much for watching I hope that you've enjoyed this particular episode until then take care goodbye